starting right now, do something, anything on a consistent basis to move forward your dreams. Now, there's a lot to unpack in that quote. It is that you start now, that you do something, anything, when, on a consistent basis to move forward your dreams. If your dream is to learn to read the stock charts, to be able to potentially in the future trade, invest, understand what's going on in the financial world around you, do something. And we encourage you to follow the charts with us every day. It won't cost you anything but 10 to 15 minutes of your time. You can supercharge that training by filling out the daily market worksheet. For what you're listening to now, there's the weekly market worksheet for the weekly review and forecast, which we are doing at this moment. You fill that out as you listen. When you do practice trades, the most important thing is to track your practice trade. If you don't track what you're doing and learn from your mistakes by noting them down and keeping a trader's almanac, then of course what will happen, you won't learn much of anything. We are here If you go to chartingwealth.com, sign up for free for the daily reviews and the once a week weekly review and forecast, you'll get all that information for free. Yes, you can buy our book. Yes, you can be a Patreon supporter. But first, commit yourself to 10 to 15 minutes a day. Let's jump into these charts. Stocks rebounding up at the end of the week. Bonds down, gold up a little bit. Bitcoin up. Let's talk about where we are and see what the charts tell us. Price percent oscillator on the S&P on the weekly chart, which is where we always start on the weekly chart. You go from the big chart to the small chart. What do we see the big trend is? Price percent oscillator negative, flat. Now, as we look at what we see on the derivative oscillator, lose still negative, losing a little bit of downward momentum. How did we end the week? We ended the week with a red spinning top. And that red spinning top, of course, tells us that, and it's an, it's an open box, not a solid red spinning top. So it's a slowdown in the up movement with a great deal of indecision. Look at the high last week. What was the high? We can find that out simply looking on the left-hand side of the screen. 398.12. What was the high this week? 396.41. So we didn't hit a higher high. We have some sideways sideways slippage occurring. We can see it on the price percent oscillator. We go from the weekly to the two-day. Of course, we look at, we had six days of decent down movement. That was all the way through Thursday. The first day of the latest two-day candle is a green open box up candle. Again, not hitting the high that the market hit back on Wednesday the 17th, but again, trying to move up pushing through the two-day trend line, had a nice six-day trend line, still negative. So even on the two-day, the overall push is still down, derivative oscillator negative, losing downward momentum. What's up on the half day? At the end of the day, it crossed over, going up. So we saw things get geared up Friday morning, pushing through the two-day trend line, and on Friday afternoon, continuing that movement, topping out, touching the Bollinger Band, the volatility bands, which, which we see stretching out a little bit. So we did have a crossover on that half day chart at the end of the day. Doesn't mean nearly as much as the two day, which is four times larger. And of course, the weekly, which is 10 times larger. So remember, these are smaller waves. Understand the power of the weekly versus the power of the two day and the half day. That's very important to keep in mind where you keep your focus. That's why we talk so much about the power of weekly vertical crossovers. That's where we are on the S&P 500 as we look through all of those charts. So we're going to go from those from the S&P and we're going to move on and take a look at the Q's. Now the Q's was up 1.50 percent, a little less than the S&P, but as we ended the week, let's look at the weekly first. What did we get? We got a doji. After three weeks of strong down movement last week, pretty much a doji. This week, even more so. Price percent oscillator still heading down. Derivative oscillator about flat. We go to the two-day chart. What do we see on that? Well, 
again, this is a different chart, but we see still, like the S&P 500, we see the NASDAQ 100 is sliding sideways on the price percent oscillator, our most important, most important indicator. Remember, it is a percentage version of the MACD, the Moving Average Convergence Divergence Indicator. This is a lagging indicator. But when the market is moving, it's a high, it's a extremely helpful. We call it our main and principal and most important indicator. So we see things sliding sideways. Again, overall down pressure is still existing there. We look at the uh, derivative oscillator losing downward momentum. And this just the first day of the latest two-day candle hasn't plumbed a lower low. But again, sliding sideways and pushing down a little bit. Look at the half day. We can see where things bottomed back on Thursday morning and then recovered a little bit in the afternoon, pushing up in the morning and the afternoon on Friday. Has not crossed over yet. So overall, the, the pressure is still greater on the Qs going down as opposed to the more of a sideways slide in the S&P. So we'll continue. Remember the weekly vertical crossover still in effect. The two-day recross still in effect. So we will keep an eye on how this shapes up as we get into Monday. What happens with this candle when it finishes forming and if we have things slowing down or speeding up as far as getting closer to a crossover on that two-day. That is where we are on the S&P. That is where we are on the Qs. We're going to leave stocks, go to bonds. What's going on there? Well, we can see that bonds are down for the day 0.36%. Now, we've ended this week with a green solid spinning top. That means a slowdown in the down movement. It's not a green open box candle, which we haven't seen we have to go all the way back to last year to find that in bonds. Bonds have just been moving down. We had our weekly vertical crossover. We have to go all the way back, all the way back to the week ending the 15th of May 2020 for that weekly vertical crossover. Now, we've had some jumping in points since then of two-day recrosses, but this is the first green candle we've seen at all in many, many weeks since the middle of January. The derivative oscillators lost downward momentum, still negative, quite negative, but lost for the first time. Price percent oscillator still moving down, flattening a little bit more than it had previously. Look at the two-day. We see it again, what's happening there. We can see that the two-day is trying to cross over. We'll see what happens on Monday. Price is hitting right up there on that weekly trend line. We'll see if that occurs when the two-day candle finishes drawing on Monday. If it's a big down day for bonds, that might not occur. And what do we see happening on the half day? Well, that crossed over back on Monday, the 22nd of March, and has been going up until it topped in the morning on Thursday, the 25th, then we can see where that downward movement resumes. So we'll continue to watch bonds, see what the charts tell us. If we have this pullback confirmed and a crossover on the two-day, we'll be waiting to see if and when that happens. Now, that's where we are on bonds. We'll go to gold. Gold up a little bit, 0.28% for the day. Has the down movement finally stopped in gold? Don't know. Going in, completed the second week of a sideways slide. Price percent oscillator still heading down. Derivative oscillator negative. Losing downward momentum since it hit its bottom back on the week ending the 12th of March. So we'll continue to watch and see what there is to see. Today, crossed over going up back on the 19th of March. That was last Friday. And what has it been doing all week? Pretty much sliding sideways. Derivative oscillator pulling away from the red signal line. Uh, I keep hoping that maybe the bottom's been hit and we'll see a weekly vertical crossover in the coming days or possibly weeks. When we look at what's happening on the half day chart, we can see pretty, pretty much a laminated price percent oscillator just laying right there on the red signal line, derivative oscillator still negative, and we can just see that down slide, that sideways sliding movement. So hopefully, hopefully, I can't wait to get into gold again. We will have some 
practice trading opportunities with gold crossing over going up, maybe in the future, or maybe it's just digesting these losses and getting ready to head down again. We'll wait. We will see. What did Bitcoin do? Well, Bitcoin up for the day, 3.87%, not enough to prevent the weekly vertical crossover from occurring in Bitcoin. This is the first weekly vertical crossover we have seen since Bitcoin rotated over going up at the $12,137 mark approximately back on Friday the 23rd of October with Bitcoin hitting a high of what? 57,466. That's beautiful move in that weekly vertical crossover, isn't it? Well, this is the first crossover we've seen in a while. This is a negative going down. Derivative oscillator has been negative for a while and gaining downward momentum. Let's look at the two-day. Again, putting in a red down candle. This is a Heiken Ashi candlestick, so it's showing us again devolvement. Derivative oscillator gaining downward momentum. Price percent oscillator heading down. Was an up day. We can see where the real down movement occurred this week, and that was hammering down on Thursday. A bit of a, uh, a recovery on Friday, but not enough to have that half-day chart crossover going up. Not enough to keep the two-day from continuing to move down on this latest candle, and not enough to pull the price percent oscillator back through the red signal line like it has done a couple of times over the last few weeks. So again, definite downward pressure on Bitcoin. We'll continue to watch and see how things will sort out. That's where we are, folks, as we end the week. So appreciate you being with us. If you want a copy of our book, we have an autographed copy available for you. If you want to support us with Patreon, a lot of sweet things we give to our Patreon members, a once-a-month live question and answer session where we take your questions, we take the ETFs and stocks you would like us to help you practice trade, take a look at those for you, and just talk about interesting things. In addition to that, for everyone who signs up, we send you our three-part series, Options Made Simple, The Charting Wealth Way. You want to learn about options? We've got a great course for you, for our Patreon members. God bless. All the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.